Time is now 9.35 and a quorum of the board is present, so the board meeting will begin. First item of the agenda is approval of the agenda and order of priority. Are there any addition items to add or delete? I move approval of the agenda. Second. It's been moved and supported. Are there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same? Motion carries. At this time, Marilyn will introduce the members of the State Board of Education. Thank you and welcome. Um, I'll go around the table starting on my left. Um, the State Superintendent, um, this is his first meeting. You've seen him many times though prior to now, is Brian Whiston and he serves as the Chairman of the Board. And as we keep going around the table, John Austin's President of the Board. He resides in Ann Arbor. Cassandra Albrich is Vice President of the Board and she resides in Rochester Hills. And Michelle Fecto is the board secretary. She's from Detroit. Board member Richard Ziley is from Dearborn. And Rick Joseph is this year's Michigan Teacher of the Year. He's from Birmingham Public Schools, Birmingham Covington School. He's a fifth and sixth grade teacher. Do I have that right, Rick? Yes. So welcome to your first meeting at the table. You did probably see him in June when he was here for the celebration of Teacher of the Year. Um, across the table, uh, Karen McPhee represents the governor's office. She's the senior education policy advisor. She's on her way. Next to her, Eileen Weiser, board member from Ann Arbor. She's also on her way. Kathleen Strauss, board member from Detroit. Lupe Ramos Montini, she is the board member from Grand Rapids. She is the board's NASB delegate. It's their national association. And next to me, also on her way, Pamela Pugh. She is from Saginaw. She's the board's treasurer. I'm Marilyn Schneider, the state board executive. Right. Um, and then we have recently decided that it's great if the guests can introduce themselves. And um, where do we want to start with that? Perhaps in the back. Jim, do you want to start? Sure. Jim Cameron, Social Studies Consultant, MDE. Uh, Greg Young, Michigan Department of Education, Office of Education Improvement and Innovation. Paul Drummond, Michigan Science Teachers Association. Ravi Kramer, Executive Director of the Michigan Science Teachers Association. Deshaun, Educational Testing Services, First of New Jersey. Terry Long, Educational Testing Service, Enville, Michigan. Tony DeShane, Michigan Legislative Consultant. Kyle, you want to go next? Jacob. Jacob, sorry. I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just gave you a promotion. <laughs> Uh, I'm Jacob Kanzler. I'm a reporter for Emerge News. Ben Williams, MDE. Steve Best, MDE. Gary Jensen, former principal in the state of Michigan and now an associate with ACT. Uh, good morning. Vanessa Kiesler, Deputy Superintendent for Accountability Services at MDE. Susan Brown, Deputy Superintendent, Oxford. John Jean Sass, Deputy Superintendent for Educational Services. And happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> One week. <laughs> Ross Fort, uh, Special Assistant to Deputy Superintendent Kyle Garant. Alice Ann Henry in the Superintendent's Office from MDE. I'm Marty Ackley from the Office of Public and Governmental Affairs. Oh. I'm Marla Moss from the Office of School Support Services. I'm Linda Forward from the Office of Education Improvement and Innovation. I'm Lois Lofton Donover, Consultant for the American Federation of Teachers. David Michelson, Michigan Education Association. Good morning, Paul Salah, Wayne Ritza. Terrence Slunger, Superintendent of the Calhoun Intermediate School District. Judy Pritchett, Macomb Intermediate. All right, thank you everybody for being here and participating. I'd like to take a moment to welcome you all to the State Board of Education meeting. Well, this is uh, not my first State Board meeting. Judy's sitting in a seat that I sat at for many years, uh, but certainly it's the first as State Superintendent, and I thank the Board and for giving, placing the trust in me to, and be supportive of me so that we can move forward. I'm asking all the stakeholders to work together with the board and the department and me to develop Michigan into a top 10 performing state as we develop that plan over the next 10 years. It's going to take all of us working together to make this happen, working together in a positive, workable, and supportive manner. We'll hear suggestions from several organizations this afternoon and next month. And in the meantime, we're also getting input from employees and uh, constituent groups out there. Bottom line goal is to become a top 10 performing state over the next 10 years. On another note, the National Association of State Boards of Education has issued a press release and will be honoring the following people at its annual conference in October. 
Eileen Weiser will have to say it again while she's here, will receive the Ding Distinguished Service Award. We'll congratulate her later, but let's go ahead and clap now. And Grand Rapids Mayor George Hartwell will receive the Friend of Education Award, and we congratulate him. And Richard Ziley has been nominated for president-elect, and the election will occur in October at their annual conference, and congratulations to Richard. The first item on today's Committee of the Whole agenda is presentation on the Michigan Social Studies Standards and, a, and discussion of a period of public comment. Over the last 16 months, the Social Studies Standards have been updated through the lens of the C3 framework. The Social Studies community was involved in the process. Several practitioners have participated in the update and review process, and the updated standards are ready for public comment. The MDE will also be conducting public information center sessions around the state to further seek feedback. The next steps will be the period of public comment, followed by a presentation to the board and approval in October. As the staff is coming to the table, I'd like to introduce Norma Jean Sass, who did introduce herself a moment ago as Deputy Superintendent for Educational Services. Norma Jean comes to us from both working in Dearborn schools as a principal and central office in, in uh, curriculum and staff development, and in Dearborn Associate Soup for K-6, along with, or K-5, along with special ed, ELL, and other duties. So welcome, Norma Jean, to the department. As you said, you've got a weekend. You're the expert. Congratulations. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Linda Forward for doing double duty over the past several months as interim deputy superintendent while also maintaining her job as director of the Office of Education Improvement and Innovation. Linda's been great to work with and I appreciate Linda deeply. So thank you, Linda, for your thank work. You. With that, go ahead with your presentation. Okay. Well, I'm very grateful and humbled to be able to do this important work and um, to work with all of these great people. And let me tell you that it's a little bit overwhelming the first week, so imagine my surprise when I saw my name on the agenda for the whole morning after one week, I thought, oh, better than I thought I was. No, that's absolutely not true. But that is why I'm handing it over to Linda, who has been awesome and has uh, provided the leadership for this. So take it away, then. Thank you. Um, as we launch into this presentation, just a reminder to the board that uh, we are coming to you today uh, to share the standards and also to tell you about our period of public comment and what we're trying to do in order to gather more input from the field. But as a reminder, we've also been talking to you over the past few months with social studies about professional development and what it will take to put this in place over the next few years, uh, what teachers will need, what principals will need assessment in order to change our assessment system. It's not something that you can just do overnight. And also the teacher prep part where we are trying to make sure that the colleges and universities are preparing the candidates to be ready for this, this new work. And so we've been trying to work with that. In addition to that, our um, Office of Public and Governmental Affairs, Public Relations and Governmental Affairs, um, has been working closely with the legislature and Steve Best from our office and uh, Ben Williams from their office have been visiting with several legislators on social studies and science standards over the last few months. And so, um, last count, there were 30 some? 46 that they've met with. So, um, they have absolutely tried to make the outreach to the legislature as well. Um, so, in addition to that, um, you should know that both sets of standards are a result of a lot of public input from the field, from the classroom teachers, from organizations that represent both of these uh, pieces of work. So what are we up to now? Um, if you take a look, the uh, in September, November of last year, um, the standards were updated by committees and the first updates were put together. Um, we moved on November, December, there was a review committee then that started <coughs> taking a look at what this writing committee had been doing. <coughs> In March, the final review committee took, uh, took a look at the standards and stamped them good. But just to be sure, we asked an external review committee to provide further feedback. That took place in May and June of this year. Um, I watched part of that process, and the writers, the authors, were sitting around the outside of this room. And those who had come in to give the external input were hit in the middle of the table, and they were giving input all morning long. And then in the afternoon, they kind of switched roles 
and the initial writers were now down at the bottom and reacting to what they'd heard and seen and making changes as appropriate. Um, some of the partners that we've been working with um, who helped us with the writing, <coughs> Michigan Council for, the, for Social Studies, uh, the Center for Civic Education, and a variety of uh, the Council of Economic Education tried to bring a variety of people to the board, uh, to the table in order to have input with the areas of expertise. As you know, with social studies, um, they tend to fall in discrete areas, and so we wanted to make sure that all of those who had uh, a role in teaching would, uh, that those topics would be a party to the changes. The most notable changes in these standards <coughs> are, first of all, that our grade level content expectations and our high school content expectations have been edited to create a fewer, clearer, higher concept for, um, for the standards. We've done this because we've heard from the field and from the teachers at conferences and workshops that um, we needed to make things cleaner for them and more concise for them. And so this was not a total rewrite. This was simply a clarification and a streamlining of the standards. The standards have now been placed in a vertical alignment to ensure grade level appropriateness. And that was done because sometimes teachers had difficulty figuring out where their piece fit into the whole, into the continuum. And so wanting to make sure that they understood what the seventh grade teacher understood their role <coughs> in conjunction with the eighth and ninth and with those who were feeding into it. So that was the rationale there. And then as you know, we have worked very closely with civil rights folks here in Michigan in order to uh, infuse civil rights considerations into these standards. Um, and the rationale for that was that the South Southern Poverty Law Center had given Michigan an F for civil rights content in our standards. And so we certainly wanted to overcome that and have worked closely with that group to help us make that possible. So the work is done. The standards are ready. Um, and now it's time to have a broader conversation about how they look to um, those who will be using them and to others in the field who may have some some input that would be useful to us. The standards are available at uh, this website, at this URL. We are proposing, proposing a series of information and public comments sessions and uh, in order to do that there will be two pieces. There will be an online survey for public comment which has been our standard practice for several years now that uh, when you have standards ready to be reviewed, we put it up in an online format, we gather information, and that's it. We are this year going to try a broader outreach, and uh, we'll be getting that August 17th and ending it September 28th with a series of informational um, feedback sessions, and they will be in multiple sites statewide. We will introduce the, we will give introductory information on those standards, and then hold breakouts by topic, and then reconvene to summarize that breakout, that feedback and bring that back. We will also be broadcasting these as webinars wherever possible and posting that, that session online. So there will be lots of opportunity for people to see what went on and also to have input. The uh, community sessions are going to be held in Sault Ste. Marie, Marquette, Detroit, Mount Pleasant, Grand Rapids, Battle Creek, Traverse City, Flint, and Lansing. We think that we will have pretty well covered the state at that point in time, something in close driving range for everybody. Um, I'm really excited in a, in a non-traditional way about um, things like holding um, those meetings at the Michigan Science Center and the Gerald Ford Museum, uh, Michigan Historical Center. I think that will just make a nice flavor to the, to the sessions. It's not going to change what we do, but I think it also sends the message about what we're talking about. So those are the session places. In addition to that, um, the uh, accountability services uh, arm of the department is having a conference, a series of conferences, and we will be presenting in those uh, in the Lansing Center, Crystal Mountain, Northern Michigan, and Ypsilanti. And so those are also sites where we will hold uh, informational sessions and gather feedback. There will also be other conferences and events, and the, the, um, one of them will be the MASA meeting on September 22nd at the Grand Traverse Conference. So in all, I think there are about 15 places where people can provide input in addition to the online gathering of input. So that is our plan for rolling them out and gathering public information. Brian? <coughs> Questions? Um, so when were we, when did we last um, update these? Was it 2004? I believe so. Um, so appreciate this work very much, and I just want to note um, 
this is one of the important things that the board and the department does periodically. It's been 11 years. We improve our learning expectations for students based on evolving and improved understanding of how we um, deliver content to be effective and help to master that content. Um, and we rely, as you have seen, on educators here in Michigan and stakeholders as well as best practice in the field. And I really appreciate people understanding these are then improved standards, fewer, clearer, higher, more rigorous, um, a lot better aligned, and treating better our civil rights uh, expectations. You know, Michigan is a civil rights leader, and it, it was very welcome that we worked hard to uh, put that clarity of knowledge back in the, in the content. So I really appreciate the process, appreciate the consultation with um, the legislature and uh, the fulsome opportunity for the public to also um, weigh in and I encourage people to participate and take a look at these standards and make sure uh, they're attending these events and, and helping us uh, uh, with these expectations. So thank you very much for this process. Our pleasure. Richard? I, I was curious as to the uh, response to the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, um, of all the of all the non-curricular organizations that could critique our social studies standards. I, I'm wondering, did we get an evaluation from the American Enterprise Institute as to whether uh, capitalism is presented in a uh, in a adequate manner? Uh, I'd just like to know a little bit more about, um, uh, I guess, the particular uh, attention to to this non-educational organization's uh, concern. I, I would have to say to you that uh, Southern Poverty Law Center did evaluate all all of the states, and we did pay attention, I suspect, because it, it was something that was shared with the Department of Education. And when we read over what they had as a critique, we believed that they had merit in their concerns, and so we did address them. <coughs> we did not hear from any other organizations about the quality of the, of the standards for some other other considerations such as economics. So um, we did hear from them, and we thought that what they said had merit. So other organizations that would express concerns would receive comparable attention. And, and this would be on the, I don't mean to say this, I, I, I don't mean anything disparaging about this, but this was uh, communication and response on the bureaucratic level, not on the basis of the, I mean, the board didn't say these are concerns that need to be worked into the curriculum. Well, I, Richard, yeah. um, our Civil Rights Commission, led by Arthur Horowitz, raised these issues with me and Kathy and others uh, and asked us uh, to please um, encourage full discussion of how we could um, improve our civil rights education uh, and that's part of the dynamic that drove attention. Our folks in Michigan were eager for us to um, pay adequate attention to uh, the role of civil rights and the importance of it and how we deliver it, which was relatively absent from what we were teaching. And I, did I miss something in the four years that I've served on the board? Because I don't recall us discussing it before then. I don't, know, I don't know if we discussed it, but it was asking the staff to take a look at Arthur and others' concerns. So Kathy has some additional. So staff and some members of the board informally you're talking about the civil rights thing? Yeah. I remember discussing that at the table. Discussed it yeah. at the board meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but the point is, if others want to have comment, we're going to welcome yeah. those comments. Mm -hmm. All right, I had Lupe, then Kathleen. I wanted to know the time of the meetings. I don't have those here with me, but I can get those for you by the afternoon. Okay, thank yeah. you. Kathleen? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I want to thank you for doing all this. I, I've been very happy to get this review and then rewrite. And I'm glad we're doing some sessions in person as well as online. We've been asking for that for a while, so that's really good. Thank you. And You're welcome. Our pleasure. Congratulations. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I've just been contacted recently by some folks in disability rights organizations, and they had a question about um, when we talk about including civil rights, is there inclusion of um, you know, disability, civil rights, activism, and you know, things like that as well in the curriculum. So in the standards, mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, I just want to be clear about our role versus <laughs> Sorry, schools. That was a big uh, so in the standards, uh, we chose to deal first with four groups, and I never get them all correct, so I'll, I'll get, take coaching from the back, but uh, African American, Native American, um, Asian, and um, um, Arabic, Arab American. So those, those are the four groups we started with. We will, um, we will certainly take a look at expanding that in the future, but if we had, we felt that if we took on the whole, yeah, it, would, it would go on. And in, in the standards, you will find places where we are addressing the general of things like, not calling out specifically disabilities, but we are address, addressing the general need for understanding the rights of multiple groups and um, issues that that may bring to a conversation I, I think and they a consideration. May have some, I haven't met with the group yet. We've been talk, um, communicating, but they may have um, ideas. Right. I would be um, happy to share those with you. Yeah. Perfect. First, we'd be happy to hear that. Second, if they have some ideas um, beyond that, okay. certainly if they would like to, to come <coughs> to any of these hearings or these information okay. sessions okay. and provide information, that also can influence what the final product looks like. So. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Rick? I just, you know, as a social studies teacher and as someone whose platform um, is heavily uh, invested in this notion of equity, <coughs> I certainly want to compliment you guys in your work. Um, also, I want to speak to this notion of fewer, clearer, and higher standards, which from an educator's perspective are always very welcome. The notion of um, breadth over depth. So if, if we as teachers can go deeper in, in, into a concept and really fully help our, under, help our kids understand the complexities of issues so that they can make connections um, and then and then you you know sort of transfer that knowledge throughout the course of their their academic experience that's certainly welcome um, teaching to or, um, the Southern Poverty Law Center also has a lot of educational outreach they have a magazine called teaching tolerance there's also a website called teaching tolerance which provides um, curriculum or curricular suggestions for teachers so they're very much not only um, active politically but they're active in a, in a curricular sense um, and so it, it would seem like if they're advising um, of the need to to be more sensitive to civil rights issues that they they do have some some um, sense of understanding of the issue too so thank you thank you all right before we move on to the next topic I'd like to step back a minute Eileen Weiser has joined us and we congratulated her earlier for receiving this distinguished service award from the National Association of State Boards of Education but since you're here we want to say it again congratulations <laughs> point of personal privilege my family reunion misses me today and I'm sorry that I was late uh -huh. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, the next item on the committee of the whole is presentation on the Michigan science standards and period of public comment in May 2014 the Michigan Department of Education started a series of presentations on the proposed Michigan science standards including considerations for implementation from the classroom to state level policy Further requests of the State Board of Education, the standards have been discussed with stakeholders and state level policymakers. The standards are ready to be revisited for public comment. NDE staff will be conducting public information sessions around the state for further feedback. Next steps would be the period of public comment, followed by presentation of the board for approval in October. Linda and Norma Jean, please. This one will look up. There'll be a lot of similarity. Okay, to the, to the previous one. So um, just as a reminder, um, these are some of the things that we had discussed here at the board table earlier <coughs> to lead us towards achieving the vision that um, we need to have um, good PD, that we need to have aligned assessment, teacher pre preparation, um, model programs and resources, and some of those have already been prepared. Um, research for high leverage practices, we want to get into that kind of work as well. So we've talked about these things over the last several months um, and beyond. So uh, we're ready now. Um, the adoption and development timeline, you will recall, and this applies to both topics, that just adopting the standards does not get us into full implementation. It will take time to do that. and so. For instance, in this case, there were some precursors to all of this. The framework for K-12 science education was developed, and that laid down what we ought to be doing for good science education in, across the country, in Michigan most, most particularly. We then became a lead state in the development of these science standards. Um, in 2012, we held a wide educator review for this work, 
and we had a public uh, a period of public comment. So we have been through public <coughs> comment before for the science standards. However, since we are we have been revisiting and we have taken our time through several issues to get to this point, we are going to build in public comment again, and we'll show you that in just a minute. Um, we have uh, done several efforts and analyses of the work of the development, and we also are working now on state board presentations that you have joined us in, and thank you for your good uh, attention to all the pieces that we did work on. We have had some stakeholder meetings, um, several of them, in fact, that Steve has led, and um, I already al alluded to the legislative meetings that are going on. We will now go into external review and public comment. And under public comment, this now becomes really clear to you. Uh, we did have one in uh, April of 2013, as I said. 94 to 98 percent of those who we um, replied were supportive of uh, the, this proposed science standards based on the questions and the focus. The standards are now available at this URL. And the proposed information sessions will follow exactly the same model as the other and on the same dates and in the same places for most of it. Uh, so there'll be a period of public comment um, as well as sessions August 17th through September 28th. The information sessions will be to inform as well as to gather feedback. So where there are questions about, well, why didn't you do this or why did you do that, we'll be able to have informational pieces to that. They will be held multiple sites and we will do the broadcasting of webinars where possible. Um, community sessions are in the same places as the social studies. And there will be educational, educator informational sessions as well at the uh, accountability and assessment uh, sessions throughout the state. Also, we'll be meeting with the STEM Education Summit at the Van Endel Institute on August 17th and Grand Traverse uh, Conference Center at MASA on September 22nd. Following that period of public comment, we'll gather the information together and we would hope to be back to you for both sets of standards by um, the October State Board meeting. And I would be remiss in not acknowledging several people who worked very hard on both of these standards. Uh, Steve Best has certainly led the charge with the science piece along with a plethora of people from this, both from the state and across the state in organizations. And then Jim Cameron has left us. Uh, and uh, Greg Dion, who is the um, the uh, supervisor for our curriculum and instruction. I see some assessment people back there as well, and I won't attempt to introduce them, but I will tell you that they've worked very closely with us on this work, and so try to stay aligned and keep our, our, our paths coordinated as we move forward. Questions from the board? Eileen? Um, I have a couple questions, <coughs> and they're actually about both sets of standards. Okay. Uh, I wanted to find out, I know that the, the staff has been extremely uh, proactive in working with the legislators, but one of the things that I wanted to make sure of was that we had let both the Speaker of the House and the Senate Majority Leader and all the legislators know about these sessions. Um, uh, what we want to do is to make sure that they're totally transparent and that everybody who has a chance to participate can. And the second um, question would be that uh, one of the criticisms that was leveled um, on our adoption of math and ELA standards uh, was that they had never been piloted. Um, but we know that there are Michigan educators who've been using uh, integrated science standards for the last four or five years through Project Lead the Way, and there may be others also. Sure. Are you going to be able to make sure that there are participants who can testify to the um, viability and uh, show their enthusiasm for how this works, given how complicated they're going to be, especially in science, to implement? Um, we have had conversations of making sure that some people from all walks of the education community, community as well as business and industry have an opportunity to actually be invited to come and, and provide input on these. So that's a very good suggestion to add to that list. Okay, and then are, are we contacting uh, the, the yeah. Senate and the House to make sure that they're able to invite their constituents or include in newsletters? Yes. Right. Thank you. Thanks. John? Uh, again, I really applaud and appreciate all the hard work <coughs> and the outreach to work on these standards. And you know, the, the, the number of sessions we've had where you all have explicated with the help of some of our great science educators just showed me, you know, the nature of the improvement of these standards is pretty powerful. We're not just teaching kids science. We're asking them to do science and get excited about science, and that's really powerful. And, and to be um, 
appreciated and lauded. Uh, and I also just noting our Michigan science educators and our higher education science educators, you know, are the, the best and the leaders in developing these standards. That's and correct. some of them are in the room. That's correct. And uh, this is a, another opportunity for Michigan to show leadership on how we reform and improve education help more kids get excited in these important areas and find wonderful lives and careers doing science. That's terrific. Women and others included. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I think this is really good progress on this too. And we, we have had many presentations on the development of, this, of these science standards. We're not doing this just to, this is not just a rubber stamp. We, we have been doing this for months and learning a lot. And I echo what John just said about making it exciting for, for kids to learn and to be involved. The presentations we've had have been very impressive. And uh, maybe some of those would be helpful when we go to the legislature. Mm -hmm. uh, following up on Eileen's comments, because we've been talking about the importance of involving the legislators in this process all along. And we just have to make sure we don't drop that ball. And I, I see these dates are the same. Are you planning to do one in the morning, one in the afternoon? Is that what you're planning to do? Uh, some of them would set up that way. Some of them will be done with an overview and then breakout sessions at the same time. So if oh. you want to do social studies, you go this way. You want to do science, you do this way. And then if you want to do both, you can switch. So there'll be oh. two sessions of each. You can make the oh, change. Okay. So there's plenty of opportunity. If, if somebody's coming and really wanted to talk about both and learn about both, they'd be able to do that. Well, that's that interesting. Time. Okay. Thanks. We so will get the time for you. It's really good that we're doing those in the communities and around the state. Yeah. We, uh, once, once we've had this presentation with you, then we'll be sending out, uh, you know, messaging across the state about where and when and how people can get involved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I would say to Mrs. Struss that um, as we were meeting with those same 40 plus um, legislators, we were talking both about social studies and science. So we have oh. had that much outreach already. Good. Okay. I was privileged because a legislator had contacted me initially and wanted a meeting with me. So we combined it with um, the, the meeting that the department held, and I was privileged to see their presentation. It was absolutely top-notch, totally uh, reasonable, well-paced. You convinced me. <laughs> Thanks for everything you've done. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Next item on the committee, the whole agenda is discussion regarding criteria for grant programs. Today we have four grant criteria items before the board for approval this afternoon on the consent agenda. As you're aware, there's not a formal presentation plan for grant criteria items, but you have the opportunity to ask questions. Before we do that, I want to highlight that the Michigan Department of Education is embracing the challenge put forth by the governor's workshop on third grade reading through implementing the program funded through the School Aid Act. There are two initial sets of criteria for grants being proposed today, focusing on the years prior to kindergarten entry, both enhancing the infrastructure that exists in the form of the Great Start Collaboratives and the Great Start Parent Coalitions, and building a cross-agency effort to support parents in interactions with their children through home visitation programs, and a new pilot uh, focusing on parenting education programs. You'll hear more on early literacy efforts during upcoming meetings. Does anyone have any questions or comments on the criteria for staff? Richard? Just a word of appreciation. Uh, the, uh, the grant amounts are, are put in there, and that's very helpful in terms of, you know, which ones to, to check out and, <laughs> and look at. So I appreciate that. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Seeing none other, we'll have to take a second for John and I to talk about what we're going to move from this, this afternoon's agenda well, to uh, well, fill the we're time not here. Ready for lunch in the yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's super well, went very quickly you're, here. You're, you're, you're showing an amazing efficiency in uh, these meetings already. I so appreciate it. Um, so I imagine we can just move over public participation and the discussion items and try to do the rest of our agenda. Um, uh, as our regular meeting and come back to those after lunch because the public is not here yet and our presenters are not here yet. Right. So I'd be happy to, uh, if you want to start us into the regular meeting, um, item seven, or number seven, um, we can go on from there and get as much done as we can. So that's that makes the, sense. Uh, yep. 
starting with the approval of minutes. And yep. My report, your report. Yep. And All right, so we'll go ahead. And, and the, the, the legislative report is going to get moved up into prime time. <laughs> oh, let's not, let's, not, let's not push that. <laughs> let's not go too far here. <laughs> All right. That should be interesting given what's going on in the legislature. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that report. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that was not appropriate. Okay, we're going to move to the uh, approval of the board minutes. Uh, approval of the minutes for the regular oh. and committee the whole meeting of June 9th. I think we're supposed to go into formal session first. Yeah, I you think you have to gavel us oh, in. I got a bag of gavel. <laughs> now we're in formal session. Okay. I banged the gavel. Am I supposed to say anything else on that? In ceremonial <laughs> words like this meeting's called to order. This meeting's <laughs> called to order and such things. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, uh, we. PJ. PJ. No, 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 it's too late. Okay. I'll go back to PJ. All right. Uh, good morning. The time is now uh, 10 10 and a quorum of the board's president of the State Board of Education meeting of August 11, 2015 is called to order. With that, then we'll move to the approval of the State Board of Education minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstain. And one abstention. President's report. Well, let me formally um, note and welcome you for your first official board meeting. I'm the superintendent. Uh, Brian, appreciate Glad you're here. And uh, we've already noted you've hit the ground running and are charging straight ahead with the great team here towards us realizing our goal of improving education and joining the top 10 states. So, really appreciate your energetic start and welcome. Uh, thank you very, very much. Sure. It's exciting. A um, couple small items and a couple other items I wanted to just share. Lupe and I were together last night in Grand Rapids. There was a convening of UN sponsored communities that are leaders in sustainability, and Mayor Hartwell uh, hosted this delegation, and uh, Lupe uh, and I were there, and I presented, but Mayor Hartwell, given his uh, work on building a more vibrant community in the Grand Rapids is often the room Zumba lessons down in front of the art museum as I was walking over to the hotel, and it's, it's fantastic, but his commitment and the community's commitment to education is pretty profound, and we showed them a lot of education work that they're doing over there, so since we helped honor him, uh, and with that, and uh, he is—he uh, was term limited out of office, but uh, they elected a good person as his successor. But he's a really good man. A woman. A woman. A woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First, first female mayor of Grand Rapids. Very exciting. Rosalind Bliss. She's a real smart go-getter, and will help that community continue to thrive. Um, my friend Janice Brown. You all know Janice, former Kalamazoo superintendent, uh, architect, really of the Kalamazoo Promises. Have you seen the? press coverage recently, the recent report from Upjohn, it's working. Um, the kids are not only going on to college, they're graduating from college at much higher rates, and the community is uh, reviving. And people are moving in to Kalamazoo, and it's part of their economic revitalization. And Janice wanted me to invite the board members and all of you. They're having a 10-year anniversary community celebration next week, or this, this weekend, Saturday, August 15th, from 11 a.m. to 3 in Bronson Park downtown Kalamazoo to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of this incredible reanimation of a commitment to great education that is people are copying around the country uh, and it's a great example of the kind of leadership and education that this state represents and uh, anybody who can come they have some celebrity there that I didn't know from uh, one of those uh, what's that uh, uh, show uh, Amer America's Idol uh, I don't know if he's on here but anyway it's a great event so um, Janice has been part of, um, there's been some work going on around how we develop a refreshed kind of game plan for improving post-secondary education attainment, helping more of our citizens get the post-secondary degrees and credentials that we need. Uh, in February, Business Leaders from Michigan put out their call to action, how higher education can help Michigan become a top 10 state, asking us to all work together to put us in the ranks of states where uh, we're joining others with the share of people with post-secondary degrees and credentials of all forms. We're now uh, not in the top ten. We're 35th in the nation, and the education attainment is the key to economic opportunity and a competitive state. Uh, there's been a work group uh, working to develop a set of recommendations to how we increase post-secondary credential attainment. 
uh, and set a goal of 60% of our citizens achieving those degrees, which would put us in the top 10. Uh, right now, we're at 45% of our adults have post-secondary credentials that help them navigate and succeed. Uh, it's been the community colleges, the universities, the private colleges, the governor's office, with Karen now, formerly Craig Ruff and Jim Spagnola. The department has been represented, Mike, uh, as Patty Cantu to be part of this uh, process. Uh, I've been facilitating at Superintendents Association, the Michigan College Access Network, business leaders from Michigan, the Workforce Development Agencies, and others with stake in post-secondary credential attainment. Um, we're going to, in a couple months, I think, make our report public and make recommendations for how we set a goal and hit a goal of post-secondary credential attainment. Really, 10 years after we did this, or 11, in the Cherry Commission, how do we, where are our major strategies, and includes a lot of things that touch K-12, how do we enhance early college credit taking and participation, how do we better connect and support the guidance counseling and preparation of our young people. I want to, A, uh, will be a briefing uh, the department staff uh, and want to brief you all, my colleagues, uh, share this uh, recommendations and analysis with you and probably bring it forth publicly in a couple months when we begin to talk about it publicly as important agendas for Michigan uh, to move forward on. So that's an exciting effort and then part of it, uh, Karen led a delegation that uh, from this group that went to a state policy academy that NGA and the Lumina Foundation had with six other states that are committed to had set a higher bar for post-secondary attainment and we learned about a lot of the strategies for particularly closing achievement gaps among minorities and low-income folks who have furthest to travel to earn a credential and complete degrees and how do we seriously move these numbers so that's uh, be part of our, our recommendations so um, stay tuned for more on that and I'll be sharing more with you all but it's a big piece of, a priority for Michigan is to help more of our citizens get the education that allows them to succeed, participate, and help create the economy of the future in Michigan. And uh, we really want to all work together on that agenda as part of hitting this goal of top 10 performing in higher ed attainment and top 10 performing in K-12 attainment. Um, we're going to hear from a lot of good folks t this month and next month. You see the lineup today that Brian and we have reached out to to try to give us your five or six major ideas for how we improve education achievement in Michigan and uh, so we can reinforce in our work and our policy agenda uh, the agendas for improvement and we can work with others uh, here in the legislature across the state stakeholders to focus on what's important and we're going to see a, a number of presentations including that we, we made some recommendations on how we reorganize school finance and uh, school organization last year um, we've had several studies come out recently uh, from the Upjohn Institute uh, with their roadmap for improving school finance from public sector consultants, from um, the Education Trust uh, report recently about how we join the ranks of better performing states. I think they all are saying very similar things, and I just want to draw attention to that. Uh, we need to spend our money differently, with differential <laughs> funding to support kids who are at risk and uh, full service and uh, cost of education needs to be a factor in how we spend our money. We need to make strategic investments that it can really lift achievement from early childhood to better supporting teacher and teacher quality and professional development and evaluation. And we need to do something to do better with this uh, uh, landscape of schools opening, closing, students moving, choice, charters, the dynamic of how we, we soften that financial blow of the choice making that's going on so that it doesn't destabilize education everywhere and help our local districts be able to raise some more resources to put in education. And so there's some alignment with the kind of recommendation <coughs> looking at the best performing states. And I really want to call attention, we're going to hear from folks from Upjohn. Theirs is the most rigorous analysis of what other states are doing. I mean, much more rigorous than ours. And their recommendations are kind of common sense, uh, things that everybody could support in terms of how we spend money differently to get better outcomes. So we'll be hearing from some of that. But the adequacy study that was called for and put into legislation, uh, we, we talked about it a bit and, and it was very clear that the legislation itself framed a good adequacy study. And so that has now been let and I think that study will be looked to to provide another uh, set of information about how we fund schools uh, that I, get, I believe will be done in the spring. 
And I, my own sense is if it's done well, it will reinforce many of the existing analyses of how we need to revamp our school finance system to get better outcomes. Uh, but I imagine that that will be the time once the adequacy, adequacy study is done that we can all, governor, legislature, us, be looking at what are the major directions for that kind of change that we need to make. We have an outdated financing model and it's not helping us achieve and we do need to keep attention to that and try to encourage attention to the kind of the common sense uh, solutions that are beginning to congeal in some of these analysis of how we revamp school finance. So I think that's that's my sense of the, the dynamic as we move ahead. A lot of good, bright ideas about school finance overhaul. The adequacy study will be another important contribution and uh, hopefully we can next year uh, go to work on some changes that are important to make. That's my report, Mr. Superintendent. All right, report of the superintendent. So certainly I've been spending a lot of my time visiting with departmental staff and different education groups in, in the office and around the state, learning from them what they like about what's happening in education and learning from them their suggestions on how to become a top 10 improving state. I have moved to the area, so I like that short drive to work every day now. That's much better. Uh, <laughs> I am working with John on the evaluation. I think my team has said they will get it to John, to John in the next week so we can continue setting that goal process and uh, so I'll know what you're going to hold me accountable for. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to that because I do believe in accountability and evaluation not only for myself but all superintendents, principals, administrators, and teachers. I do think setting goals and holding people accountable will be part of our conversation of moving the state forward. So I certainly need to model that and be willing to put myself in that same position. Certainly spending a lot of time in conversations on the top 10 issue, uh, meeting with different educational groups. I'm, uh, staff is invited to come meet with me here at MDE, any staff member that wants to, and, and, and a lot are taking advantage of that. We're also asking staff when they go out and uh, have meetings with local <coughs> district, uh, educators that we're asking them to ask them the question of what we need to do so that we can get a very well-rounded and we get a loud voice suggesting to us what we need to do. Certainly some of the short-term initiatives that I'm working on is evaluations for uh, teachers. You know the legislation legislature has been looking at a package of bills both in the House and the Senate. We're working with them to try to get a package passed and we're coming up with a plan uh, that if something doesn't pass that we'll present to the board that we would move forward on because it is an important topic uh, to be uh, to move forward with so we'll keep you posted both what the legislature is doing and what we're looking at doing third grade reading we talked about earlier in the meeting is a certainly key not only third grade reading it's really should be reading kindergarten through 12th grade because we don't want to just focus some states talk about third grade reading they focus on it and then by seventh or eighth grade they lose their focus and students get behind again. So we really want to create a reading and writing across the curriculum and a focus that is K-12 and beyond. And we'll be working with the board on that and sharing with you what we're doing. Uh, certainly uh, testing and assessment uh, is important. Uh, the department and its staff did a great job with MSTEP uh, moving forward last year in a very short time period uh, and had an assessment that went off really without too much hitch. Little, a few, we did listen to people who made some comments about how we can do it a little bit differently or better, and we'll be sharing that with the board in the near future about some steps we're taking to do that. But certainly we're still continuing the conversation about assessment that's done at a local level, assessment that is warranted at the state level, and how we can work together with districts so that they can get the assessments they need at a local le level to drive instruction, and we get the assessment we need at a state level for the $14 billion we spend to make sure we're getting the accountability. So we're going to continue over this next year having that conversation, and we'll be including the board in that. Certainly customer service is also a focus. You know, the department does a great job meeting the needs of districts. We just want to change our focus a little bit to make sure that everything we do with districts is filtered through the lens of good customer service and uh, that we're there to help. And even if we go to a local district through processes and have to let them know they've done something wrong, we certainly will do that, but we certainly will also provide some suggestions to them on how they can do things uh, in the right way so that they can meet the needs that they're looking for. Long-term goals obviously will be the top 10. 
uh, where the process will be that we'll listen to those input between now and the September meeting. We then will work with Marty and, and the rest of the deputy soups and come up with a proposed report for the board. We'd like to have it done and actionable by the end of, this, uh, end of the calendar year so that we're moving forward uh, with actions that we can take and legislation that we need passed so that we can move forward on it. Some exciting stuff on that is there really seems to be a willingness in the education community, whether it's at Alliance or working with different uh, groups, that they really want to hear what these recommendations are and they want to join with the board on those setting, uh, you know, those three to five or whatever number of recommendations and use them as a unified goal front. And so I think we really have an opportunity, a moment in time where there seems to be all the education groups coming together waiting to hear what the board is going to do on this and then working with the board to make those goals come true. So I think it's an exciting opportunity. Some of the other parts of that, like John had talked about as part of the top 10, what I have shared with the board ongoing for the last few months uh, since I was hired was certainly my own thoughts and goals on where we need to move forward. And those conversations, we talked about a P14 strategy, making sure preschool is available to any student who would, uh, parents and students who would like to attend, make sure that we have the secondary options that are available, that every student has access to those options, and making sure that uh, accountability, we understand what it means to be accountable. We'll be coming forward with some recommendations to the state board and legislature what we think it means to be accountable. And again, we'll be working with the state board in designing that as we move forward. Then what happens when you don't meet that accountability and what happens when you do meet that accountability? The other thing John talked about is the new funding recommendations. We have shared with the governor's office our thoughts on those recommendations as we heard from the board. We'll continue to work on that. We'll continue to have conversations that we hope will help drive the discussion of where the, uh, a new funding model would go. The focus needs to be on improving student achievement, as we talked about, developing model classrooms, devo developing best practices across the board, and having a place where districts can go to and see what is working, what is best practices, and have examples from other districts that have implemented these strategies and where it's working so that they can contact those districts or, and or the MDE. So we'll be working with you on that. And certainly we want to celebrate the good work that is happening in our classrooms across the state. We want to have conversations about teacher prep and focus on professional development. So we certainly want to honor the great uh, need we have out there for outstanding teachers and also celebrate those great teachers. And so graduation rate is also has to continue to be a focus for us. So those are things the board and I have been talking about and we'll be developing as goals as we move forward when we hear from the top 10 uh, suggestions that we're going to be hearing over the next few months and have been hearing. Any questions or comments on anything I've shared, Richard? Um, I should know this, but uh, what is the criteria for a practice uh, being uh, described as best practice? Well, our team will work on, uh, that's an interesting question that we've had as a discussion with our own team, making sure one, that it's a, a proven model that has worked, so it's best practices. But also, let's say an example, the, our data shows that District X has really raised third grade reading. So they've got the test results to back up the, what they've done. So we'd, we'd put that as an example. Another district maybe has improved graduation rates from you know 82 to 92 percent. What did they do? So we want to have the theoretical, the best practices, the research that says this is best practices, and then we also want to back it up with two or three different size districts who the data shows they've made a difference in that area. So I'll turn it over to any of my team if they want to back up that about what's best practices. We're trying to, you know, set up some um, matrix uh, rubric, think that's what I was trying to come up with, rubrics that shows or demonstrates that the uh, item is a best practice. So we'll continue that conversation. I think one of the other things that we're working on is also um, being able to demonstrate various sizes of school districts and various situations of school districts so that what might work really well in one setting may not be at all applicable in another setting. And so trying to figure out a variety of pieces so districts can go to something and pull based on their demographics and their setting. I, I resonate with that because I, uh, for a while I taught high school and, and the you know, the stuff that I would use in one class, it's you know, very successful, and then the afternoon class just totally different. So um, how 
how reliable best practices are. I, th these are just, I just don't want to, if there's specific criteria, that, then. I think that's very know. valid. You, you sound like you were in our meeting. <laughs> okay. All right. John? Can I, I need to make a friendly amendment to my report, not your yep. report. It's very friendly. I forgot to mention that we had planned a, um, uh, a welcoming reception right out here for Brian after the meeting today which we had scheduled for 4.30. We may have to move that up a little bit, but I think with our afternoon <laughs> presenters, uh, after we're done this afternoon, we will have a reception for Brian uh, to welcome him and anyone within the sound of uh, Michigan government television or here in the building, <laughs> please come on down and informally um, welcome Brian. So thank you. All right, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Rick, I don't know, are you ready for your report already? Oh, oh, excuse me, <laughs> just, just a, Oh, yep, I'm I sorry, Kevin. On the, it's under your report, and it's uh, not what you talked about, but it's about the uh, the uh, modifications you previously approved Lenaway in the Intermediate School District plan for the delivery of special education services. And it was one thing I just wanted to ask a question of yep. why uh, <laughs> they removed uh, all reference to Lenaway Intermediate School District general education inclusive preschool program. That was the modification, and I wondered why that was the case. Linda, do you know? We can call, but somebody. We'll get back to Kathleen in a few okay. minutes. Thank you. There was also, they also removed the reference to specific steps in the state complaint process, and it says more accurate information is available on the Office of Special Education website. But is this easily available to parents? If I could take a look at that one. Bring it to me. Oh, here it is. Okay. <coughs> item G on the agenda there, Tom. <laughs> thank you, Kathleen. We'll get answers to that. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so, report of Michigan Teacher of the Year. Are you ready to go, or I'm do ready. you need? All right. <laughs> Just wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> he had a mender, too. Finish the last He's period. I better be ready. Under right. pressure. Oh, yeah, teachers right. are. Um, I've, I've been very busy in the last couple of weeks um, essentially taking the opportunity to network with a lot of folks um, <laughs> and meet a lot of people. As you can see from my website, and I want to thank Gary Abood and Melody Arabu, my, pre my predecessors, whom many of you know, um, because they've been extraordinarily supportive and very, very helpful um, in, you know, reminding me of the importance of, of having a strong digital presence. And so this is um, very much the, the beginning um, of my web presence. It's, um, un, it's, it's very similar to what Gary and Melody have come up with, essentially focusing on uh, m the three components of my platform, which are equity, literacy, and job-embedded professional learning. Um, if you look at those pictures, it keeps saying equity over and over again because I haven't figured out how to add um, <laughs> literacy and job that impression. But I did add those beautiful photographs up there um, well, of, of all of you from the June board meeting, which um, that's certainly one of my favorite images along with my kids right there in front of my school. But that one right there is um, something that I really, I really will always treasure. But the idea, of course, is, is that um, people will get to know who I am, and then I'll be blogging on a regular basis, as many of you know. I've already written one blog post um, in regard to a, a dear colleague of mine who passed away from breast cancer, and that's, of course, the origin of the now legendary handlebar mustache, um, which is gone. But that was used to raise money for the Race for the Cure, which happened just this past weekend in Novi. Um, and then, of course, the, the, I've already had the opportunity to speak at the Oakland County Effective Practices Conference at Lake Orion High School. Um, I introduced the keynote speaker there. I spoke to a, a class of graduate students at, through Madonna University um, regarding equity and issues related to equity. And as many of you know at this table, equity is near and dear to all of your hearts. And, and to me, equity is kind of the essence of public education in general. I mean, public education is about um, access and it's about opportunities for all students. So. Um, it, 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 my challenge will be to narrow that topic down, of course. Um, but there are also, um, through this webpage, there is also the opportunity for me to um, have a presence on social media. So basically, there's a link to the Michigan Teacher of the Year Facebook page. 
uh, which will, will basically give me the chance to document what I do as the Michigan Teacher of the Year on a daily basis or a near daily basis. In addition, I've also, I also have the opportunity to, um, of course, be present on Instagram, which is very popular with kids these days, uh, my own two boys included, and, um, and then uh, LinkedIn and, and some other social media platforms as well. But this is the Facebook page, and as you can see from today's post, um, you know, of course, I'm excited to be here, and I want to welcome Brian to his first meeting. Um, I've also had the opportunity to meet with a number of people who are, are very interested in what's happening statewide um, regarding equity, literacy, and job-embedded professional learning. I met with um, Linda Sr., who works with the ACLU, and she's been active in, in what's happening in Highland Park with, with it's very relevant, obviously, to third grade reading readiness, uh, but the notion that reading is a civil right. And, and sort of how to address the, the, the question of low literacy levels in Highland Park, Michigan. Um, I've met with um, Lauren Childs, who's right back there. Uh, Lauren is, is, uh, is uh, a consultant with Oakland Schools, and she heads up the Job Embedded Professional Learning Network. And so I've talked with Lauren about um, how we, as, as practicing classroom teachers, can um, learn from each other, how we can um, how we can continue to sustain professional learning uh, for ourselves by ourselves and how we can grow that work through a number of uh, professional learning uh, initiatives. And um, I've also had the opportunity to um, meet with people from the Network of Michigan Educators. We're going to have, a, you know, we have a conference, uh, many of you, Lu um, Lupe and Kathleen uh, for certain were, were at our conference in December. but. These are our award-winning teachers. These are um, National Board Certified Teachers who get together every December to, uh, to, to meet and, and celebrate the work that we do, but also to provide professional development for our colleagues statewide. We're trying to expand our network of teacher leaders this year um, through, through a, an expanded conference that will hopefully not only recognize what teachers are doing statewide, but also grow this work of job-embedded professional learning. So um, I will continue, of course, to work to build my network and, and meet with folks and figure out um, all the good work that's happening and really shine a light on, on the talents and the success stories of, of, of educators statewide. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Richard. Rick. Can yeah, I make absolutely. a comment? Yep. Uh, in your report, you talked about successes. Uh, celebrate successes, teachers' successes, school success, and you're talking about the same thing. So we're, we're all going to be uh, celebrating success and looking at the half full glass as we proceed in the year because there's a lot of good things happening in schools. Agreed. And unfortunately, that doesn't get as much coverage, but <laughs> we're going to celebrate. Well, we, we have to help it get celebrated more, yes. Yeah, we used to do that. We used to do that more regularly, and I think it's time to do it again. It's very important, and I've mm -hmm. missed it, and yeah. I've been Absolutely. trying to get it back for a long time, so now's the time, I hope. Can I ask a question with that? Yep. So, so you just yeah. informally bring up well, schools, we, well, or is there some we kind of action? Yeah. We had this Blue Ribbon School program, which mm -hmm. was really good, and we went to the schools, and it got a lot of publicity in the local area, the mayors came, the police chiefs came, the local legislators came, and the uh, community came. So it was, and it got good local press. It was, it was, for, it was important to the schools. And it was important for us to recognize that we have schools of excellence, mm -hmm. that we have a lot of schools in the state that are doing very well. It sounds mm -hmm. like, you know, everything has gone to hell in a handbag. Not true. I mean, it, some schools need a lot of help, but some schools are doing very well, and we should recognize those and publicize it. Mm -hmm. Maybe bring some to the board meeting. And that's and, what we'll work on doing. As we have done with some of these science programs. Uh, but we used to bring kids to, we used to go, we used to have meetings around the state, which is another good thing mm -hmm. every once in a while. So. <clears throat> So Rick, did we interrupt you? Did you have more or are you also? If I may say two quick things. Yep. Oh, sorry, One, to your point, Kathleen, 
there's an expression, good teaching is good teaching is good teaching. So whether you teach in Detroit Public Schools or whether you teach in Iron Mountain or whether you teach in Birmingham, there, and, and we, it's kind of what Richard was talking about, what is best practice. There are a lot of effective practices that are happening um, in, in individual classrooms. Now, they may not be brought to scale or they may not be systemic in nature, but that doesn't negate the fact that there are really talented teachers working everywhere, and all of you know that. And it's important that that, again, be highlighted um, regardless of where you teach or regardless of how your district is doing per um, uh, test scores, let's say. Um, in addition, I had the pleasure of, of, of um, participating as an audience member and watching Michelle Fecto and Brian, uh, Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly uh, in a public listening session in Troy. As you know or may know, the Lieutenant Governor has a daughter who has autism. And so he's very interested in autism and autism awareness, and he wants, he's, he's going around the state on a listening tour. So I, I was able to see in Troy um, exactly how that worked and was able to listen to a lot of parents who were concerned about a number of issues related to their children and the way their children were being served vis-a-vis -vis special education in their individual districts. So that was very insightful, and um, it, it gave me yet again something else to work on and to consider uh, in terms of this notion of equity. Thank very you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up on the uh, today's agenda is state and federal legislative update. Marty Ackley will provide an update on state and federal legislative issues. And of course, Cassandra Albrecht uh, may do the same. Thank you. Well, the, leg the state legislature is, is taking some time off to be back in the district during the summer. There are periodic uh, session days. The Senate is in session today. But really not moving on anything they're still working on the you know the big project um, for the transportation package to try to fix our roads um, education wise the education committees are not meeting at this time uh, they are working on some issues um, behind the scenes and, and Brian mentioned a couple of them the educator evaluation third grade reading um, but nothing is public yet on those um, as far as in Washington both the House and Senate have passed reauthorization legislation. Now they're working in a um, conference committee setting, uh, probably not until um, September before they, you know, come together to hopefully agree to something. So um, it was decided that because the legislature was not, the state legislature was not working on anything at this moment, that the uh, SBE legislative committee um, be wise and not have a meeting this month. So there's really nothing to report from that committee. Um, but so I'm not really. That, that, that's the that's the temperature of the of the situation. So you finally get on prime time and you have nothing. To <laughs> is that what I'm hearing? Timing is everything. <laughs> <laughs> we are. I will say though, we are fortunate that Kathleen Strauss sits on the Government Affairs Committee for NASB, and so she's been um, watching the ESEA legislation very closely and keeping all of us informed on what's happening. Oh, it's been helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the latest message I got from uh, NASB was that they're working, the, the staffs are working together, trying to get the basic stuff out of the way that they could agree on. It's not, before they get the legislators in, involved. Right. So uh, they don't expect it had to happen until sep September, as, as Marty said. Mm -hmm. so we'll get, we're having a meeting on the 24th. A phone, it's a phone meeting, which is really good. Uh, so I'll know more right. by the end, by the next meeting. Well, so will whoever will know more right. by the next meeting. There, there were some general agreements. I think both both versions, the House and Senate version in, in Washington, yes. um, continue the um, requirements for state assessments. There is some disparity as to whether the House the House and Senate version of how much yeah. how much um, authority you give states in their accountability systems. Uh, one version also uh, would include an opt-out um, provision for taking assessments. And those are some of the contentious issues that will be discussed in the conference mm -hmm. committee, I think. Yeah. Right. So as well as the Title I funding. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. 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 And how that's used. Yeah. yeah. Is there, it's, yep. um, is there any, I, I heard that the idea of reauthorization might be happening, is there any, I don't know if you've heard at, at the national level anything happening with IDEA on reauthorization or projected to be 
discussed any time. I no. haven't heard any talk about IDEA okay. no. at this point. It's yeah. all <coughs> ESEA. Okay. It, at least that I've been told. Right? It is due to be reauthorized. There's just no schedule that we that we've heard. Uh, I also um, had another question. The governor had been talking about having an urban, uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, package, uh, legislate, you know, legislative package, and um, it, and I remember it was supposed to be in the spring of 2015. Um, is there any word or anything? You hear anything on uh, possibilities of? His agenda around, uh, you know, like in response to the um, the uh, coalition. coalition for the future of Detroit school children. Right. Well, the coalition came out with this report, right. and then the governor came out with his ideas. And from what we understand, and Karen may have a, if she, you know, yeah. may have a better idea yeah. of where that is. Legislation has not been introduced yet. From what we understand, it's still being developed um, and talked amongst the the different parties in, leg in the legislature before they actually come out with blue backs and then introduce them as actual legislation to be considered. Okay. okay. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I've heard like sort of an outline of what he was right. the response. Right. But the new company, the old company, the, yeah, 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 the splits yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I had a question about you. Last month we, uh, we supported really the, the governor had a work study, a work group on the third grade reading. Mm -hmm. or as, as Brian says, not just third grade reading, but leading up to third grade reading. Uh, and I wondered, what is the status of that? Is, is it in legislation now? Or what, what, where is that going? Or where, what's happening with it? There is discussions going on in the, amongst the education committees. I'm not sure. Has there been legislation? No, there's been recommendations of it before right. that we're working on. Right. That we're working on. I, I can't hear you, Ben. Speak up, I'm sorry. Uh, we are working as a department to implement some of the ideas that were put forth Thank by you. that committee, but there's no legislation per se. Not okay. yet. I'm sorry, my voice is kind of going. Oh, that's okay. But they are working that uh, those recommendations into legislation. I don't think it's been introduced yeah. yet. Correct. But we as a department aren't waiting. We're going to take <laughs> those recommendations and we're moving forward. Correct. Oh, okay. Uh, that's really what I want to know. What, what's the right. status of all this? Right. Right activity. Right. Uh, I just want to follow up on your question and that is um, has uh, the legislature or the governor have any of them reached out to MDE or has MDE provided any input into the urban education agenda and if so what does that look like? Well I, I had mentioned in my board briefs that we had shared some preliminary conversations with uh, the governor's team that uh, we thought that certain things needed to be done including return of an elected board that we needed the certificate of need or some type of process in terms of opening and closing of schools as the board had put out the role of MDE in any urban policy needs to be that we play a key role that's the board the superintendent and Department of Ed in Detroit specific that we needed to pay off the debt that if we no matter how controversy that is the bottom line is if we don't pay it off, we're going to pay a lot more later. We can pay a little now or we can pay a lot later. And so whether it's even though it's a difficult conversation, we need to find a way to pay off the Detroit debt. And we talked about a classroom focus of making sure that we're, we're you know, looking at class sizes, we're looking at professional development, we're looking at staff uh, that are in the classrooms and that any reform really talk about what we're going to do to improve classroom instruction. If we continue to have conversations about who's going to run the schools, that's important, don't get me wrong. But if we don't change what we're doing in the classrooms, we're not going to get the change that we need. So the conversations we've had have been big picture. We've not uh, had specific meetings, but it's more been big picture about the thoughts that we have. And, and I shared that with the board in my board briefs. I don't know if this actually this may not be directed to you Marty but um, we were talking about the school resort uh, um, reform officer do we foresee that person ever being at this table to give some updates and help with some continuity um, I don't think we thought about that having them at the table we certainly can invite her to some meetings 
you know, that Norma Jean's new, uh, Linda and Norma Jean are meeting with her. I had a couple meetings with her. Uh, we're going to work with the school districts involved. We're going to continue to provide services to those districts. Uh, as you can, as you just saw, they released 16 buildings, cut 17 <laughs> from the 2011 list. And so we're going to continue to work with and provide services to those districts. We're going to continue to work with the SRO and the governor's office to make sure the needs are being met. But we certainly could invite. And, and I guess you know, for me, you know, one of the reasons why I'm strongly to opposed that. to that service being at DTMB is that at, at the local level, the confusion that it causes, and I've heard a school district already saying that, you know, are, are these two entities going to talk? You know, we might get some different informa differing information. So just however um, we do that until it's returned back here, um, I, I think that that needs to be done. I mean, we have the two issues there. The, the, the most important issue is the services we're going to provide to meet the needs of the district. And that we're going to be focused on. Certainly over time, we're going to work with the governor's office about why we think it needs to be returned. And then one other question. I, I yep. brought up in um, one of our other meetings, and I, I saw it in the minutes from the agenda planning meeting. I wasn't at the agenda planning meeting for this meeting. But we talked about DPS school board being able to present. Um, I know that we're going to be doing Looks like he's here to maybe do that this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> but I'm hoping, yeah, well, I don't know what he's here to present this afternoon. But um, I think as we're talking about Detroit, which our largest school district, and we're talk and we've heard from the coalition, we heard from um, the governor's plan, and I think that they definitely need to be a part, and we all, I think, agree. Yeah, there was so, no disagreement. Right. So I, hopefully we can get them on the agenda for the September meeting. I'll just reiterate that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Marnie. Thank you. Yep. <coughs> going to the action items. You want to take a break now, or we just have? Uh, oh, yeah. the audience yeah. want to speak. Would it make sense to have them mm -hmm. do it before lunch? When we finish the consent agenda, and um, any other comments? Okay. So I move approval of the consent agenda. I know we have a couple questions that we owe uh, Kathleen, but we're getting those. We'll get oh, thank you. Support. It's been moved and supported. <laughs> the consent agenda. I move the consent agenda. It's been moved it and me? supported. Any questions other than the ones we already owe? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Comments by State Board of Education members. Are there any members who wish to offer comments? I think uh, I wanted to thank the staff. Um, I was privileged to be at a meeting um, with Linda Forward and uh, a number of the uh, department staff at the Michigan Science Centers um, uh, uh, last month. Um, they met with Tanya Matthews, uh, who's the executive director. Um, they explored the role that Michigan Science Centers and uh, Michigan Science Center in particular has uh, trying to meet um, K-12 learning objectives, both with formal assistance, which turns out to be, in their case, a significant amount of uh, educator uh, uh, support, educator uh, professional learning support, and also informally with project-based learning and goals. Um, it was an extremely creative and uh, productive session. I, I, it was fascinating to see the interchange on ideas about things like authentic assessment. What does assessment really look like? And I think that Tanya Matthews nailed it really well for this board when she said that I don't personally think that putting a teddy bear in a circle three times in a row shows that a kid has learned anything. But if they're in a work group and they uh, do well in that group and they master certain tasks and they go on to another one where they use that information and show that they can build on it, then that's, that's real learning. So the question becomes uh, whether or not the science centers are um, organized enough themselves, which I'm not sure that they are, to engage meaningfully with their community schools and also with the department. But I know that that's being explored and I was very heartened by it because they're huge assets and they're scattered around the state and we're not using them as well as we could, I think. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out uh, is that um, an organization called the Pacific Research Institution Institute has put forward a study, which I just got a copy of. I haven't had a chance to really examine it, but I've heard about it for a couple of months. Um, it shows that Michigan's middle class students, not just the children at risk, are not learning as well as they could be. 
Uh, the study uh, uh, takes a look at any school in Michigan that has fewer than 33% free and reduced meals <clears throat> to see whether half or more of their children are uh, in fourth, eighth, and eleventh grade for English language arts and math are showing as proficient on the state test. And they examined the 2012-2013 uh, MEEP data, which uh, was after we raised the, uh, uh, the test scores, on, especially in ELA. Uh, in particular, math is a problematic across the state for trying to get enough kids to be proficient. So as we look at, um, and, and it pinpoints, um, uh, it, it puts a, a spotlight on something that I wasn't really aware of. I, I hadn't understood where the data uh, uh, could support us being able to figure out how to help schools better. It's middle class schools across the state, so I think it's something that we ought to get copies of. Uh, it's I, I'm not did. sure. Well, you I did, you received one? So I, I wasn't does. sure. I thought, I, I, chatted, yeah. I emailed Richard, and I don't know if he'd gotten one. So. But I think we should be taking a look at it and next month possibly discussing it. I'm not sure who can go into that with us. But uh, what we're trying to do is to assemble a picture of what's not working so we can find out how to make it work. And that data is really important in, in our quest. Thanks. Per perhaps we could identify some schools that are beating the odds and failing to uh, educate uh, well-backgrounded uh, well, uh, students. Well, I'm not sure this study will help, except by the exclusion of those yeah. schools, because it's only looking at schools where kids aren't making 50% proficient or more. Yeah. So it would be the other ones who aren't on the list that would be of interest to us. Yeah. In that. Is your organization that could perform the study? Pacific Research Institute. And did you get a copy? It's a green. It's called uh, yeah. Yeah. Not I, Learning I, as Well as as They Should no, or something I, like I that. Oh, yeah. It's a really yes. study. It Nor yet. have I. But I've yeah, opened so it up and I was interested and surprised at some of the schools that were struggling in that area. Are they affiliated with a university or any? I don't know anything about them. I know that I had heard about it before. The biggest issue is that it's just plain data, data from our MEEP. And it's only looking at schools that are below a third kids free and reduced meals to try and see um, if, if it's a poverty situation or what this it, you know what it is. And when you take those schools, some of which, uh, as I was looking through the book, have as few as two to five or ten or twenty percent free and reduced meals children in grades four, eight, and eleven for ELA and math, do are all of their are are, are fifty percent or more of their kids making. Um, uh, are, are they um, proficient in those subjects? And the answer is no. So then the question is, what's causing that, and how can we move it forward? That's just in Michigan, or that's well, they've done it in Texas and in California. I don't know what other states. Those are the three that I've heard mentioned, and it's only to pinpoint that there are issues with middle class children too that we may not be uh, looking at and addressing. Yeah, because I, I know that I've seen research that had been done on using the PISA studies. No, this that is that me. Showed that based on economics that, uh -huh. that, that if you had less than 25 percent uh, I don't know why the 30 I suppose but if you had less than 25 percent the schools were some of the best in the world and this is this is just much in yes relation with poverty uh -huh. as, far, as far as the PISA but PISA is not a study of every Michigan child that's right. why this data is so interesting because this yeah. is our own test and it's our own new cut scores um, uh, not the new test, though, not MSTEP, but it does give us a snapshot of 2012-13 to say what's not happening for those children that's happening in other, other schools yeah. um, and in other, in other classrooms. PISA is, 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 is an international assessment that doesn't touch every Michigan child. Right. right. Or most, mostly every Michigan child. All right. Any other reports from state board members? We're just wrapping up our meeting here. <laughs> yeah, we, we had through it. But the most Why important is to come. So. <laughs> if we have um, people who came from public participation, yeah, we're going to do that in a minute. Public participation, yep. we could do it now. Yeah. I, I just wanted to. Um, I know that the lieutenant governor will be here uh, in September, but I've gone um, around the state to five: the Benton Harbor, um, City. Troy and Macomb. I think we're all <laughs> forgetting something. Um, we'll be in Detroit on September 10th, and we will be in Redford trying to accommodate Livonia um, School District in that area. Um, the Redford Library on the 26th, 6 to 8 p.m., um, to listen to um, parents, um, 
students, community members uh, around uh, their experiences with special education, and it's been um, really a great privilege to, to be able to do this in a bipartisan way on an issue that we're both really passionate about. And um, uh, so I encourage you, to, if, if, you're, if you can attend uh, the meeting on the 26th or on the 10th, um, to, to do so. Um, it's it's uh, it's been very uh, enlightening for me, in a lot of ways. So, um, and I'm hopeful because of this uh, bipartisan effort um, and, and the goodwill and sincerity of the lieutenant governor on this issue and his passion that maybe something can can come of this. So, um, but there's there's quite a lot, and then there's also a survey that he is asking folks to fill out. Um, it's on his website. It's also different uh, seed. If you go to Google Seed S E A D, which is the nonprofit that's helping arrange all these meetings. Um, so, anyway, I just wanted to share that, and I'm sure he will expound on what we've learned at the next meeting. So, I say thanks, Michelle, for taking such leadership on behalf of all of us for working and engaging in such a constructive way. It's important. Thank you. I want to expand on that, especially that we're doing it in a bipartisan manner. Mm -hmm. I think that's critical that we do as many things as we can bipartisan. Uh, now, uh, Michelle, I didn't hear any cities in my side of the state being. Ann Arbor. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay, that's not Michelle. real. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real. <laughs> Consider. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm a, I'm a I, those are the ones I've gone to. Yeah, there's there's actually been I've other been, meetings around the state. Yeah. I don't know exactly I've where, but there to, has I haven't been, been to all of the them. <laughs> and he has, I believe, been to Grand Rapids already. Yes, he had said um, it on the in April. You said it. Yeah. 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 So uh, he's he's been. I don't know why. I mean. I only, when I learned about it, that's when I started to participate, which was in June. So I'm not sure how they publicized or who, you know, they publicized, but when I, I was invited to attend and I followed up, and that's when I, I mean, and that's when I was to the five places that I've gone to. Those are the ones I was made aware of. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll just um, yeah. announce that I went to the New Members Institute last month, and I did find out that I have a whole year to use the excuse that I'm new. <laughs> 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 so it was great. Um, and then also from January until June, I participated in the Career Readiness Work Group, and so there should be a report that comes out in September that looks at a definition of of. Um, from a national or federal level of what career readiness means. And we, so we heard from a bunch of experts. I was able to take Michigan information as well, meeting with um, MEDC as well as Patty Cantu and others. Also, we had a presentation at our last meeting from um, Dr. Beverly Grafia Walker, who is from Genesee County or Flint, and she's the president of Mott Community College, and they're looking at doing a, a <coughs> college and career readiness program in Flint that was instituted in Montgomery <coughs> County. So we had um, a presentation from Montgomery County and Flint, obviously two very different <laughs> uh, counties or communities, but um, I think that she's gonna be able to pull it off and it, and it looks like it's gonna be a really good program. So wanna hear more about her program as well. I just wanted to, I couldn't let the maize and blue flowers go without a comment. Uh, so um, I have a couple of things that I would like to say. And this will be better, better at 4.30. But um, first of all, thank you for the right colors. Um, I have met with Coach Harbaugh. And for those of you who participate in the fall um, access uh, competition between uh, Michigan State and Michigan, watch out Michigan State. <laughs> <laughs> the second Yes, right. The second, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, the second point that I need to make is that I may actually miss getting this award. I have um, uh, the Weiser Center at the University of Michigan is doing democracy boot camps with the non nonprofits in Slovakia that are working in the Middle East to try to do, uh, to try and start NGOs and to uh, improve the rule of law. 
So um, I have a chance to go back and see people I haven't seen for 10 years, and it's a powerful tug. So if I don't go to the NASB uh, uh, award, it has nothing to do with NASB. It has to do with a part of my life that I can't ignore for forever. So but thank you very much. Bright colors, lovely gesture. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so uh, time to the agenda for next meeting. As it was mentioned, if you have any items for the next meeting, let uh, John or I or anybody else on the planning team know, and we will be finalizing that agenda uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, future meeting dates, uh, we see our Tuesday, September 8th at 9.30, regular meeting. Tuesday, October 13th, 9.30, regular meeting. Tuesday, November 10th, 9.30, regular meeting. And Tuesday, December 8th, 9.30, regular meeting. We're not going to adjournment. We're going to go back and see if there's anyone here that would like to do public participation at this time. It's scheduled for 12.30 to 1, but we are here, uh, and we have uh, about 25 minutes if there's anybody that would like to share with us. Mm -hmm. We'll certainly redo public participation yes, at 12.30. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Folks coming, expecting the good. Mm -hmm. Okay, our first speaker is going to be Robbie Kramer, and our second speaker will be Lamar Lemons, and Robbie is seated there at the table, and I will remind both of you that during public participation, um, you'll have five minutes to um, say whatever you'd like to say to the board, and they do not engage in conversation during that time, but may get back to you at a later date. Um, so I'll have a timer set up here in just a second, so you can kind of gauge your comments and how much time you have left. And then you can begin whenever you're ready. Good morning. Um, I'm Robbie Kramer. I'm the executive director for the Michigan Science Teachers Association. I'm delighted to be here today. I was very interested in hearing what was happening earlier this morning. Um, and what I would like to do is to um, read you a letter of support for the Michigan Science Standards that comes to you from the Michigan Science Teachers Association. The Michigan Teachers Association endorses the Department of, Michigan, Department of Michigan Education Department of Michigan's move toward new science standards as defined by the performance expectations developed from the K-12 framework for science education. We are looking forward to working with the Michigan Department of Education to develop guidance around the implementation of these standards. In keeping with the, MS, the Michigan Science Teachers Association's mission statement to stimulate, support, and provide leadership for the improvement of science education throughout the state of Michigan, we have taken a key role in the writing and the review process for this initiative. Throughout the development of the performance expectations, we observed that with each iteration of the drafts, many of Michigan's recommendations were incorporated. We actively encouraged parents, community members, and Michigan leaders in business and industry to provide input into these science standards. We embrace the vision provided in a framework for K-12 education in which the Michigan science standards were developed. Our goal is to promote the effective, systematic, and sustained implementation of the Michigan Science Standards once they are approved. The Michigan Science Teachers Association believes that science education based upon the K-12 framework will increase scientific literacy levels for all students in Michigan. We contend that these standards will provide the skills needed by Michigan students as they enter the business and industry workforce needed to promote Michigan's economy. We have confidence that the Michigan Science Standards will better equip Michigan students for college, careers, and citizenship. The Michigan Science Teachers Association enthusiastically endorses the Michigan Science Standards for all Michigan students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our next speaker is Lamar Lemons. Lamar, welcome. Lamar is president or on the Detroit board. I'm a member of the Detroit Board of Education. Uh, name is Lamar Lemons. Um, 
I didn't come with any uh, prepared uh, remarks. Um, I was coming actually to uh, request to, uh, to make a presentation, um, the board's presentation, as to our alternative to, uh, to the uh, coalitions and, and to clear up any uh, misconceptions that the elected board or myself uh, is supporting uh, the, uh, the coalition of, uh, recommendation as a total. That's, that's, that's number one. Um, secondly, that we are vehemently opposed to the OCO, NUCO uh, division uh, of, the, of our school district, which of course would put the, under the OCO, which put the burden of the, on the taxpayers of the city of Detroit for the misdeeds and miscalculations, misfeasance, malfeasance of the, uh, of, of, of the state of, of Michigan in its operation of our, of our district. And um, we can, and it has been. The coalition did document such uh, uh, activities, not so much on the uh, criminal end. Although we do believe, because we've had such a long period of time without uh, any check and balance, without any uh, oversight over uh, other than the emergency manager and the government uh, and the governor, then what you have is um, a situation where you have absolute power, and absolute power, of course corrupts absolutely. As a matter of fact, during the uh, initial takeover, immediately when it was returned to the board for two years, we had a situation where the board went after uh, some of the um, bad players, bad actors, and they were incarcerated, eight individuals. And um, we believe that, uh, secondly, that the operation of our district, uh, first of all, violates the state constitution for the governor to have his own um, uh, 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 own school district and, and so we, we have in the city of Detroit is a uh, and the African American the preponderance of African Americans in the state of Michigan are under a separate and unequal school system where they are either under uh, the EAA emergency manager systems or a charter systems and that is a de facto uh, uh, disenfranchisement of the African Americans in fact certain communities only have the charter option and if it's quote a charter option and it's only it's not really an option now is it secondly if the uh, the charter boards are not elected so they're being disenfranchised and you have a situation of taxation without representation i think that's enough to even uh, start a revolution over and so we um we in detroit um are, are very uh are concerned on, on the uh, and, for, and, and and finally, let me say this. Let me disabuse any notion that it, that the board could not have done better, or they wouldn't have done better. Well, you should know that we lost uh, um, before 1999 in the original takeover. We had lost uh, 170,000 students, and yet when the when the state took over, we had 114 million surplus. So they lost. You could say there's a. Uh, a loss of population, and that's the, the reason that the district is insolvent. No, it's, it's the, the, because we lost that same population 17 years prior to that. So when we, when the, when the elected board had, was over the district, we ha we were able to be uh, uh, have a balanced budget, and in fact, we had a surplus of 114 million. Um, and so th that's the because you'll hear that that, uh, and I've heard from legislators that. Uh, that it, it would uh, it would have been worse at the elected board. Well, we've already proven that not to be not to be the, the, the case, and um, and so we, we we feel like we've been targeted. We were punished initially for our successes, not our failures. We had 114 million surplus, 1.5 billion dollars. We had some of the most unique uh, schools that were being were, were routinely listed in um, um, uh, U.S. News and World Reports when they took it over. They took it over because the people wanted to control the contracts for our district, period. And now they've, uh, they've uh, left the district a shadow of itself, lost our, uh, we had 90% of the market share, and we even created some of our own competition because we were the first district to create charters. We had seven school districts, uh, seven charter schools. So um, uh, we are in the process, and I'm gonna conclude with this, we're in the process of uh, a, a Title VI complaint I've sent uh, copies uh, uh, to uh, board members to, to be disseminated. Um, and we believe that uh, Governor Snyder is uh, violating both not only the state constitution, but the U.S. Constitution, Voting Rights Act, and Civil Rights Act. Thank you. All right. Any other public comments? 
seeing none, we will uh, do we adjourn our recess. Um, well, we were in regular you session. Would, you would adjourn the regular meeting because okay. the others in the committee of the whole. All right, we'll adjourn the regular session, and we will come back at. I guess twelve thirty. All right.